Welcome to Geography at Chobham Academy. My name is Miss Chalkley and I'm the Head of Geography here. There are also three other Geography teachers, Mr Eyre, Mr Bell and Mr Jergo. Today we're going to be investigating what is meant by Geography and then having a look at flags. So our aims for the session are to know what is meant by Geography and what you might study in Geography. We're then going to look at um, flags, what they represent and give some examples of different flags so that by the end of the session you're going to design your own flag. So when I say the word geography to you, what do you think of? What words come into your head? I'm going to give you a minute to write down as many words as you can think of to do the word geography. Okay, so you've had 30 seconds, so you're halfway through your time. So keep thinking when I say the word geography, um, what places might you think of? What concepts might you think of? Okay, so you've got 10 seconds left. See if you can add anything else to your mind map. Okay, so what is meant by geography? Geography is the study of the physical features of the earth and its atmosphere. So what's the natural landscape around us and what processes influence that natural landscape? It's also about human activity and how humans affect that natural landscape, but also how humans are affected by that landscape. So that's things to do with where do people live? what resources are available to them, what is the government in that place, what's the economy in that place. So we're going to have a think about in geography at Chobham potentially, what do you think that you might learn about? So I've put six images on the board, I think you can only see five because one of them is where my head is. Um, what I'd like you to do is for each picture, what do you think you might study? So I'm going to give you 30 seconds, put the numbers one to five. What do you think that's showing that you might study in geography? Go. So a clue for you might be on the left are all the physical things and on the right are all the human things. You've got 10 seconds left. OK, so let's go through them. So the first one is of the Amazon rainforest, the second of rivers and volcanoes. Uh, sorry, the second of rivers, the third of volcanoes. So they're all the um, physical pr processes. So we'll talk about like how they're formed, where they're found, why they're found in these places. And then on the right hand side, I've got population, resources such as oil, and then where my head is was factories. So for these pictures, we talk about things about where do humans live? Why do they live there? Why is it easier to live in some places than others? How do governments make money? In year seven, this is our journey in year seven, we start by looking at a range of places. So we look at places like Rio de Janeiro, um, the River Ganges, uh, Victoria Falls. And we look at these places to get a grip of some of the geographical skills that are really important. So things like grid references or measuring distance on a map. We then look at Cairo to Cape Town, which is a regional study of Africa. And then we move into looking at climate change. So how has it changed um, over time? Is it a natural process? How might humans be impacting it? What's the future of the climate? Before we move on to looking at the River Thames and we look at the River Thames, where does it start? Where does it end? How does it influence places along its journey? What 
factors or processes might influence a river itself. And then we look at what is behind the iPhone. So we look at a concept called globalization, which is to do with the spread of ideas globally. And we have a focus on um, factory workers um, and the supply chain of the iPhone before we finish with how sustainable is job my academy and a field work unit. The idea of the year seven geography journey is that aims to, give you, to get to grips with what geography is and the skills that we need to be a good geographer. Then in year eight, we apply these and we think about well, how to human and physical geography. And in year nine, we give you a good range of different case study examples to apply all your knowledge to. So that's the background to geography at Chobham. Today, um, I want to focus on flags. So um, a national flag is a patriotic symbol with widely varied interpretations, often including strong military associations um, because of their original use. But why are they designed like they are? And what do the different colours stand for on flags? Because I think we've all seen flags, but surely they were designed for a purpose. So before um, I go into what the different colours might mean, I thought it would be fun to do a quiz. So there are eight flags on the board. I'd like to put the numbers one to eight. I'm going to give you a minute and a half to get as many of the flags as you can. So you've got a minute and a half, numbers one to eight, what the flags, off you go. Some of them are quite easy, some are a bit trickier. They're from a range of continents. So you've got 30 seconds left. See how many you can get. Ten seconds to go. OK, so pens down, no cheating. So we're now going to have a look at the different answers and you need to tick or cross your answers. So the first one is the United Kingdom. Second is Ecuador. Third, Brazil. Fourth is Italy. Fifth is Egypt. Six, Finland. Seven, Ghana. And eight, New Zealand. So how did you do? You have to let us know when you um, upload to the transition email. OK, so to prepare you for designing your own flag, I'm going to talk you through the eight colours found on flags. And as I go through each one, I want you to make a note of what the colour symbolises. I've hidden my face so that you can see purple in the corner. So number one is red. Red is the colour of life, blood and passion. It's associated with power and danger. White on flags is the colour of peace and innocence. In many countries, it's also associated with death. Yellow is the colour of happiness and energy and is often used to symbolise the sun. Blue is the colour of tranquility and trust. It often symbolises the water and the sky. Green is the colour of nature and new growth. It's also associated with stability and safety. It's often also used to talk about like the landscape of the place. Orange is the colour of joy, creativity and also strength, passion and activity. Black is the colour of darkness and mystery. It's also associated with power and strength and sometimes used to show death. And purple is the colour of passion and wealth. It's also associated with luxury and elegance, but also with power and independence. OK, so to put this into perspective and to give you um, an example to show what a flag uh, might look like and what the colours on a particular flag are, I've got the South African flag. So the South African flag, as you can see, it's got lots of colours on it. 
And those colours are all there for a reason. They're not just randomly put there. So just to talk you through them. So red shows blood shed and sacrifices made in the struggle for independence. Green, the fertility of South African land. White, peace and harmony between natives and Europeans. Yellow shows the mineral and other uh, minerals and other natural wealth found in South Africa. Black represents the strength of the natives and blue represents the blue sky. Also, I thought was interesting, the Y shape in the flag stands for the convergence, so the bringing together of diverse elements within South African society. So it's showing how all the people within South Africa have come together and create, and that's what the flag is trying to represent. So now it's over to you. With everything you've learned in today's session, I would like you to create your own flag. You can either do it about a country that you know a lot about and you want to tell me about that country through a, a made up flag or you can create your own land um, and create a flag for it. But remember, you're going to need to tell me why you've included the colours on the flag that you have underneath your flag. So create your flag and then underneath it or on the back of it, I would like you to write me a paragraph explaining why you've chosen those colours. Why are they important to put on a flag? So I gave you the South African example before. You can see I've also put the Argentinian flag on here to give you another example of a flag with different colours on. And finally, um, we have got our annual geography photography competition that I'd like you all to have a go at. Um, between now and September, you need to take a photo that represents geography. So on here are an array of different photographs from the geography department. You need to enter one photograph per student. It can have you in it, but it doesn't have to have you in it. And then underneath the photograph, you need to tell me how it links to geography. So what is it showing and how does that link to what we talked about at the beginning, those natural processes or how humans are affecting those natural processes or being affected by them. You have to have taken the photo yourself. OK, so that could be in your local area. Or it could be that you've been on holiday somewhere before and you want to use that image. The winner will receive a prize. So just bring it. If you can upload it to the transition email address, I will announce the winner at the end of the summer holiday.